Problem seven is our second basal area growth rate problem. Um, the only difference between this problem and problem number six is that this is calculating a bag 10 uh, or the basal area growth rate over the last 10 years. And that really only reflects a change in the exponent right there from one fifth to one tenth. Um, so the process is the same here. So we take the DBH of the tree and that equals from our problem 16 inches. And then because we have our tree, DBH is on the outside. If we measure inside the bark, we can get diameter inside the bark now. And then if we subtract 10 years of growth rates from an increment core, we can get diameter inside the bark 10 years ago. So I need to subtract the bark thickness off to get diameter inside the bark now. So that's going to equal our DBH 16 minus both bark thicknesses, because we have to remove the bark there and there to get diameter inside the bark now. So minus 0 0.7 minus 0 0.9 equals 14.4 inches. Okay, now we want diameter inside the bark 10 years ago. So that's gonna equal diameter inside the bark now, 14.4 minus, we basically need to take that ring width here, but we need to double it to account for removing it on the other side right there. And so I'm gonna do two uh, times 10 year ring width was 0.4 inches, in this case 0 0.4, and that equals 13.6 inches. Okay, so I have my two relevant diameters, diameter inside the bark now and diameter inside the bark 10 years ago. Um, next up, what I need to do is convert those diameters to basal areas. And so I'll do that using our formula diameter squared times 0.005454. So the basal area now. It's going to equal 14.4 squared times 0 0.005454. Uh, order of operations is to square this number first and then multiply it by that number. And that's going to equal 1.1309 feet squared. Again, on these basal area growth problems, it's important to keep a number of significant digits there on your intermediate calculations. If you rounded this off at this stage, um, it's going to then be created into this fraction and raised to this exponent. So that could compound some rounding error. So you probably want to keep four, five, six significant digits there. I wouldn't go much more than that because you're more likely to make mistakes in your calculator. Basal area 10 years ago is going to equal diameter 10 years ago inside the bark, 13.6 inches squared times 0 0.005454 equals 1.0088 feet squared. Okay, so now we have these two numbers, basal area now and 10 years ago, which we can see in our equation right here. So now it's just a matter of plugging all that together to get our basal area growth rate for the last 10 years. And remember, this is going to be a compound interest formula. So it'll be expressed as a percentage. And so we can start here with our fraction, 1.1309 divided by 1.0088. That's the first step in order of operations. Now I raise it to the one-tenth power in a calculator, that's gonna be easier to do as 0 0.1. So I second raise this number to the 0 0.1 power. And then once I have that number, I subtract one from it. I multiply that by 100, that's my final step. And this equals 1.15%, which is our final answer. So uh, a common mistake here, people will flip this ratio sometimes, which you can see will give you a number less than one, which will give you a negative number. Trees don't shrink in diameter, so that's obviously incorrect. Um, sometimes people will have an error somewhere in here and they'll get 60 or 70%, some really high number. That's pretty unrealistic. Your number should be really in the range of zero to 15% typically. Now this 1.15%, that is low, which means the interpretation of this data is our tree hasn't been growing too much over the last 10 years. If it is representative of our forest, it suggests it's time to thin, um, it's time to clear cut, it's time to do a seed tree or some other method of regeneration. And that's a 10-year basal area growth rate calculation. 